Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Austin, and this is Josh. Hi. And uh, today we're going to be talking about 3D mapping. So what are the basic things you need to do to set this up? So the system that I'm using is called Drone Deploy, and they basically are a company that is trying to make it really easy um, to get topographical data and to do 3D modeling. It's something new that they're trying. Instead of the DJI Go app, you download the Drone Deploy app. And it's free still, isn't it? Uh, it is free to use, yep. Okay. You're flying off of the Drone Deploy app instead of the DJI app. All right, cool. And you actually have to close the DJI app because only one app can talk at a time to the drone. To the fan. Okay. As soon as you open the app, it opens up a grid. Okay. So it senses where you are, and it basically makes a flight path for determining um, how many photos it's gonna take and what order it's gonna take them. And you can adjust it by selecting these points. You can actually kind of fine tune the area that you wanna. So it has, it has geofencing. Um, now what about the overlap and everything? Is that predetermined for you? Yeah, that's something that I didn't know yesterday when I was first trying it. Is that that's all stuff you can edit. So you can edit the altitude that you wanna have it run at while it's doing its grid. One thing that I found is that the lower it is, the more resolution you're going to get, but the higher it is, the easier it is for the software to stitch because it has more reference points okay. for, or for how to actually stitch it together. And obviously, the more information it has, the, the more it can do with it. Correct, yeah. And so you can fight that by um, increasing the overlap. So actually, I think for this one, I'm running the overlap at like 75, 80 okay. percent. And that's, that's a lot of overlap, um, but it's how you get the most accurate data. Okay, very cool. So basically, we're just going to hit the screen check mark here. And it's going to do some automatic checking for us. Yeah, and it's kind of nice that it automatically. It's like a pre-flight check. That's it, it really is. It's pre-flight yeah. checklist, and it does it all for you. And we're good to go now. Now, the creepiest thing in the world is the Phantom's over here. We're here. We're not even facing it. This thing's going to be completely autonomous. You can override it if you need to, though. Yes, it was the scariest flight I've ever had. And it was doing it all itself <laughs> yesterday. And I had like a death grip on the controller. But now it's, it's getting a lot more natural. So you uh, just hit the fly button when you're ready. There it goes. Now, this thing definitely doesn't waste any time, does it? No, it does not. And the default altitude to run a mission is 246 feet. Okay. And I have it set a little bit lower. I have it set at 150 feet for this mission. Again, I'm trying to. We're trying to do a structural 3D model of this property, and so I think that more resolution is more helpful when you're trying to do a 3D model. And structural is a newer thing, a newer feature, right? Yeah, actually the structural uh, feature is just in beta. Okay. The structural feature would be for stuff like if you want to like get a 3D model of a statue or of like a monument or a building, this is definitely a fun thing to play with. Now you got a predetermined course. What I love is it's giving you a live feed of what it's seeing. It's also giving you the indication of when it's shooting. Yep. And you can also monitor where it is on the grid. And yep. it's really staying on that grid. Yeah. And uh, I noticed you can't really edit the speed of how of how fast it flies, but is what it, is what you do is is you edit by editing the altitude that determines the speed. Mm -hmm. I noticed that when I was at the default height of 246 feet, it was going about 20, 25 miles an hour, and now that I'm down a lot closer to the ground, it's having to take pictures faster because it's closer to the ground. Um, right now, it's going about 12 miles an hour. Nice. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get some really high resolution data to play with. Because we've gotten some decent models, but I just, I think we can do better. You've been trying this since yesterday and you've been doing all sorts of combinations with heights, altitudes, uh, number of photos, trying to get something that will turn around the quickest for you and give you the best quality, right? Yeah, and I'm sure that people that are more experienced with messing with this, when they get to a place, they already kind of know what settings they're going to use. I just am brand new to it, so I'm just kind of <laughs> figuring it out and just seeing, I change yeah. something and I go for a flight. And unfortunately, you kind of mentioned it's kind of like baking cookies yeah. <laughs> because you, um, it does take a couple hours to process. Yeah. So after we do this, we'll go get the SD card, and then on my Drone Deploy account online, it'll have an upload option to upload all of the photos. Yep. So I'll upload all those, and then it takes, while they're stitching them and getting them together through their process, it does take a couple of hours. Enough time for us to have lunch. All right, so we're back from lunch, and we got some results for y'all. Yeah, we actually, we tried it quite a few more times. Yeah. Um, just to experiment and do some different things. And we definitely learned a lot. Yes. Yeah, if you're gonna notice here, the, the footage that you're seeing right now, it looks really good in some aspects, but really bad in others, doesn't it? 
Yeah, and to be fair, you know, the 3D modeling is new, is, yeah. a, is a beta feature for Drone Deploy. It does terrain really well, but we did find some tricks and the Drone Deploy support team did help us find some tricks to actually uh, really increase the resolution and the quality of those models. Increase doesn't even begin to justify it. It's amazing. Yeah, the first thing that we learned is overlap. So overlap is extremely mm -hmm. important. The very, very first model I did just here at the shop, it was like eight photos. I think it was like maybe 40% overlap or less. So I started doing like 80% overlap and for a small area, that's okay. It doesn't really take that long to do about 10 acres or so, yep. even with 80% overlap. That's also front and side overlap. So that's actually taking pictures sooner going forwards and it's overlapping them more on the side. Next thing that I, we really learned was altitude. Altitude makes a big difference. The lower you are, the higher resolution you're gonna get. And then the higher you are, the easier it is to stitch, but you're not gonna have that high resolution. You're, you're dispersing those pixels over a bigger part of space. So really, if you're looking for a big picture of something, high is good, but if you're looking something like a house or a property or a silo, you're gonna to wanna to be lower. Low did seem to work better for me, yeah. yeah. So the big tip that we got from drone deploy support was for 3D mapping, it is actually really important to get some more side perspective of any kind of vertical structure that you're trying to film, such as like a building or a statue or whatever you're trying to get in a 3D environment. So as how we did that is um, we actually exited out of the drone deploy app and just pulled up the regular DJI Go app. Okay. And through that, there's some automated flight modes that DJI has, and one of them is point of interest. And so with the point of interest mode, we were actually able to orbit at a 45 degree angle um, around the same altitude that we flew the original mission. And then we were able to get a side view of all those buildings. So we actually, the three buildings that we were trying, we did, we orbited all three of those and the results were drastically different. Now this is a really cool thing. Even though we're exiting out of one function and going back into the DJI app, it all works within that other app, doesn't it? It doesn't change your upload at all. So you basically just combine the photos of everything that you're gonna upload and you upload it all together. And because the information or those JPEGs are, are geotagged, um, drone deploy servers are able to parse the differences and able to stitch them together in a way that makes sense. Now keep in mind, it's gonna be about 60 seconds per picture. So if you have a thousand pictures, it's about a thousand minutes. Yep, yep, absolutely. And actually I think a thousand is the limit oh, <laughs> the amount of pictures you're able to do at once. <laughs> so you can actually use any kind of aerial photo that as long as it's geo-referenced to JPEG to upload it to Drone Deploy. But one thing the Drone Deploy app does really nicely is it flies the machine for you. And so it takes it off and it flies a pattern and it lands all on its own. It was really fascinating. I don't normally get to see things flying a geo-mapped pattern. This thing was really disciplined. The only thing that was causing it to drift a little bit was the wind. And you could see that on the corners and it was so accurate you could actually see it drift on every corner all the same way like it was constantly getting pushed but it immediately correct it and even when it came down to land it was only five feet from its original takeoff spot part of the reason we wanted to do this is this is actually a small scale test for what we want to do with flight fest so flight fest is our big event that's coming up here in july and we want to be able to capture the whole event, and that way we can kind of compare layout from previous years and see exactly where everything was, which you can kind of do with a photo, but with a 3D model is really cool. So friends, I know 3D mapping may be very intimidating, especially if you have a Phantom. Don't hesitate to check this out. Now, if you go to our articles at flighttest.com articles or check out the links below, you're gonna see all the resource links we use and a link to our article that'll give you a lot more information about this. And if you haven't checked out the link for Flight Fest 2016, go to flightfest.com. We'd love to see you there. See you guys next time.